Director of Communication at High Point University. Today we're going to talk about a little tool that is amazing and can be frustrating if you don't realize what you're doing. It's called the Direct Selection Tool in InDesign. This is InDesign startup page. Instead of starting up with opening some of these student projects, what we're going to do is create a new one. Um, it doesn't matter what size we're working on right now because I'm just going to show you the direct selection tool. Come on, create new. Where are you? Sorry it's taking so long. I want things to be instantaneous and they're not. Okay, there we go. Uh, letter is fine, uh, which I guess is 51 picas wide, but you know, I'm an inch guy, so okay, eight and a half by 11 inches. That makes more sense. I'm just going to go ahead and create the default eight and a half by 11. This is not the size that, you, if you are in my class, this is not the size that you'll be working on for your project. But you know, the sizes changes. The size changes every semester, so we'll just see what's going on. Now, the first thing you might think you want to do is Command. Oh, I'm in a Windows environment, so you could hit Command D or Control D to place an image. Oh, I'm just going to look for a picture of myself. Sure, that's fine. So if I double click this and left click and drag this here, there's a picture of moi. Now I'm going to hold down um, Control Shift or Command Shift if you're on a Mac and left click and drag the corners just so that I can change the size of this. Okay. Now this is kind of cool, right? But I want to point out one thing. I am using the selection tool. Hotkey V. It is the dark arrow with a light outline. Now the tool right below it over here on the toolbar is the direct selection tool. Now if I click the direct selection tool, in theory I can do things like left click and drag just this little node. Okay. Um, and I can now let me just show you this because this is this can be annoying if I have my image selected using the selection tool and then I click my direct selection tool all of the nodes here are actually selected and so if I were to left click and drag this it's dragging the, all of the nodes of the frame together I'm gonna hit control Z and notice it just moved the frame, right? Because with the direct selection tool, it basically selects the parts of the image. Okay. All right. I'm going to hit Control Z, and I'm with the direct selection tool still enabled. I'm going to just click off of the image and now hover over my image slightly. Remember when I talk about in class, the placement of your cursor is so important. Right now, whoops, you see with that tiny little movement, I go to the hand tool where I can move my image within the frame, control or command Z to go backwards. Or, are you there? Hold on, there we go. Right now, it's telling me I can move the edge of this frame. Right now, I'm moving nothing. And right here, I've got the hand tool. So the placement of your tool of your cursor is so important. Well, I want to show you what I can do, maybe moving just this little node. Now, because I had clicked off, right, now those nodes are white. That means, oh, look at that. Do you see how my cursor turned into a little plus button or a little square? An arrow with a square. Now it's just an arrow. Now it's an arrow with a square. Notice the little square can light up. Okay. No little corners lit up, lit up, and my cursor is a triangle. Move it slightly closer. All of the nodes are are um, lit up, and my cursor is still the same triangle. Move it a tiny bit closer. Hey, there's the there's the square in my cursor. Um, so a number of things have to happen before you can actually do the thing you want to do with the tool you have enabled in InDesign or any other software. They all work like this. Your cursor is telling you. It's communicating with you when you can do the thing. And the thing that I want to do here is move just this node. And I'm going to left click and drag it. And maybe I want to turn this into a parallelogram. Whoops, you know what? Yeah, that's fine. And I can do the same thing with this side. Bring it down, turn it into a kind of like a 
parallel, yeah, like a, um, a pyramid almost. It's not a pyramid. It's not a pyramid, Hegney. Okay, in any case, this is what I can do with that tool. And now if I go to the selection tool, now I can move this around, right, just fine. So I'm going to put this back there. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you another way of doing things because that's just, that's still just a four-sided, um, shape. What if I want a five-sided shape? Well, there's two things I could do. Number one, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. I'm going to duplicate this by using my selection tool. I could hit com uh, command C, command V or control C, control V, or I could hold down the alt button. Notice holding down the alt button gives me that double arrow cursor. You see, you see it? Left click and dragging it. Okay, and it makes a duplicate. And if we were to look in our layers panel in layer one, we could see now we have two objects, right? There, put that away. Um, why am I doing this? Because I'm going to do something which I think is kind of fun. I'm going to make that frame kind of mimic this angle. So I'm going to make, put it slightly far, a uh, little bit away from this object. And now what I'm going to do is go back to the direct selection. Uh, notice all of the nodes are now dark blue. Click off of it. Use the direct selection tool. Hover over those nerds, nodes. Now they're white. Oh, this is tough. You, you got it. There you go. See, my cursor is now the single arrow with the little box. Left click and drag this because I kind of want to make a really cool thing there. Of course, that doesn't make sense the way this, this is because this node now doesn't cover. Um, it's going beyond the edge of the picture. So I'm going to left click and drag that picture right about here. Maybe even more so. Yeah. Yeah, how about like that? How about going right through my face? And the reason I want to do that is maybe I want to do this kind of like that. Maybe. I don't know. I'm just having some fun. And so now I might want to say, you know what? I want to drag this entire edge over. So this is where we... Whoops. Come on. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. This is where I'd hover over the edge here, keep it aligned, go like that. Now here, same thing. I'm going to hover over the edge. But now because this is so small, it's not really making, or because of this little piece here, it's not really making too much sense. I'm going to go ahead and change this angle to be more like that. There, that's fun. Okay, but now let's say I want just a weird shape, right? Maybe a three-sided shape, because I want a triangle, okay, to be here, here. So I'm going to go over to my, oh, where's my rectangle tool? I'm going to go to my rectangle tool, hub, left mouse click down, hold it down, because I might want to use the polygon tool. Polygon tool is basically any sided shape, except two-sided there is no two-sided shape. And with the polygon tool enabled, oops, polygon tool enabled, I'm going to left click, whoops, I just did it. This is interesting. Um, yes, I'm alt clicking in here. With alt clicking in here, I have the option of changing the number of sides. I'm going to set it to 3, star and set as 0, polygon width, and I'm going to say, you know what, let me just say, hey, how about 1 inch, 1 inch, and say OK, and that gives me a basic shape. Right? Now you might be thinking, Hegney, 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 Hegney. There's no image in there yet. Okay, that's where... That's where you're right, and that's where you're wrong. So what I'm going to do first, and you can do this in any different iteration, is I'm going to go ahead and select that shape that I made. See? And I'm going to hit Command-D or Control-D to place. And I'm going to place this same exact picture there. And look what happened. I was able to place this image right in here. Um, and so I'm going to go back. And so the, the idea here is that you can place your image 
into any shape you want. So what I'm going to do here is just kind of move this. And now I'm going to move the image up just a little bit like that. And then what I might do, I'll show you another way of doing this. The other way is to take this shape here. I'm going to duplicate it again using the Alt method. Okay, so um, I duplicated that. And now I might want to take away this node here. So how might I do that? I'm going to show you the last tool that you'll need. It's the pen tool, and hidden within the pen tool, we have a couple things. Now, we're not going to use the pen tool or yet. You can either add an anchor point tool or delete an anchor point tool. So if I hover over delete anchor point, I can now click. Hold on. If I select, if I select this, select that, hover over delete, and click it. Now that gives me, yay, that gives me a three-sided thingamajig. Um, if I were to kind of hover over this again and choose the add anchor point tool, I could left click, oh, and I could left click, and I could left click, and I could keep adding these anchor points that eventually, using the direct selection tool, I can hover over and like change for funsies, right? Yay. Maybe that's fun. And then of course I'd use my direct selection tool and kind of move this over. Well, maybe I'd go like that. You know what? I'm going to have some fun and kind of make this a weird there, there, there. And now I have, you know, played with the shapes here. I'll probably move this just a tiny bit over so that makes a little more sense in terms of the width and distribution right there. There we go. And I'll tap W to see what that looks like. Um, and of course, this shape ha has a stroke on it. I want to set that stroke to zero. There we go. And that's it. That's using the direct selection tool to adjust um, nodes. Hope you had fun. Bye.